So welcome back to another video tutorial, I guess you could call this. Uh, essentially what this is, is me putting in my new Goliath basketball hoop, which is for my kids, not for me technically. Uh, but got this actually on sale on last Black Friday, so it's been actually <laughs> nearly a year. And uh, just haven't gotten around putting it up. So of course my kids have been asking for it, and today is a perfect day because it's October. It's not too hot right now. Yesterday was hot as heck. And it's going to be nice out today. Perfect day to do it. And I have time to do it. So I'm going to actually go through step to uh, start to finish on this guy. I'm not a big person that reads instructional manuals. Um, but essentially what it is, you put some concrete in the ground. You put some rebar and the cleats into it. And you let it all sit. And then tomorrow, hopefully I'll be able to erect the actual basketball hoop itself. Hopefully tomorrow, I guess. Uh, but if you're into reading the instructions, the instructions kind of go through everything pretty good. The only part I went through is just uh, the placement of the rebar because on this concrete they have rebar and then you have the anchor system that you put in. You don't actually uh, concrete a post in with this guy, which is one of my favorite things about it. You, uh, you concrete in lag bolts or anchors mm -hmm. and then you lag the basketball hoop to the... So if you ever do move, you can actually just buy some new lags, a new anchor kit basically, and redo this and take the basketball hoop with you. So yes, we're going to start from there. I'm going to kind of go with the tools that I have and what I'm, what I'm using to actually install this guy, but they do in include the good instruction book, so let's go over what I got. So to start with tools, I've got a nice spade nose shovel, which I've already started, kind of laid out where I want to put it. Found out exactly where on the driveway I'm gonna go with it. Post hole digger to actually dig her down, because I'm gonna dig her down at least three feet. I do have a sono tube, which I'm probably not gonna use the entire length of the whole, tube, the whole uh, depth of the, the guy, but I'm just gonna cut this for the top six to 18 inches or so so i get a nice smooth surface uh at the top uh that's perfectly uh, perfect perfectly round i guess i got some concrete tools when i do the concrete work that i have uh, as well as the actual anchor kit here this is the anchor box it's actually labeled right on the actual box itself if i uh, if i flipped it over it says anchor kit right on it so you know what actually is the anchor. It comes with all the nuts and anchors and the, re the rebar is included as well, so that's all nice. And then of course, I have in my vehicle, they say nine bags of, of secrete mix. I got 10 bags to be safe. If for nothing else, I don't live too far from the store to get more if I need it. So, got my concrete mix. And then I got a, well the bucket underneath there, that's what I'm mixing in because I don't actually own a wheelbarrow. Uh, most of the stuff I do is in the back of my tractor, but I figured that's perfect for concrete mix. You can spool it up, get our garden hose out. You will need a garden hose or a, a way to get water in it, so yay. And uh, so yeah, there we go. So I'm not going to bore you with this whole process. Um, like I said, I, I picked out a nice little hole where I'm going to put it. Um, so I'm probably going to Maybe get the tractor a little bit closer so I'm closer to where I'm throwing dirt. Um, this is where I'm going to essentially put it. You don't want to actually have the concrete touch this slab. I'm I might get it a little bit closer to this slab because I don't. I want probably a good inch or two. But you don't want this concrete touching this concrete. You want a separate system. Uh, that way any vibrations of the, of the basketball hoop aren't pushing against your driveway or any other concrete that you would have here. Uh, so that's the one thing you want to keep this as a separate system. Other than that, Digging deep, and that's I dig as deep as I can with this with my spade nose, and then I'll go to my post hole digger to get the rest out. And I'll update you when I get a little bit closer to where I'm gonna be. So um, yeah, from here it's just the manual labor of digging, and of course it is warm enough out. I'm in my nice Chaco sandals. Probably not recommended to do, but I've always done work in my Chacos, so for now I'm sticking with those. That way I stay relatively cool. But yeah, we'll, uh, I'll update you again here shortly once I get to the deeper part. Okay, so this is what my hole looks like right now with, with my standard shovel here, which you can see how the angle is really getting hard. That's exactly what a post hole digger is made for, so if you can try to loosen up what you can with your standard shovel, it can be a lot easier. Loosen it up good, and then change over to your post hole digger. Send it down, pinch, and go. 
just a really good easy way to pull the dirt out of the hole. Once you get to a deep point where it's you can't really get the standard shovel in, it's going to go a lot more slowly because you're just going to kind of go off the post hole digger. If you have a, a, a hole nose shovel as well, which I might have actually, uh, to get down there and loosen the dirt up better, so what you can do with this, that's the only thing you can do. So you, know, you just go down there and you pinch and you bring it up and sometimes it loosens up like that. It's just a little bit at a time now, so it's it's a lot slower going when you do using this guy. A uh, good rule of thumb is, uh, like we, on this, probably going to want to go as, at least three feet deep. So you can actually go and take your tape measure from the nose, measure three feet, maybe make a mark or put some tape. So you know when you actually get to that depth, you don't have to be checking all the time with a tape measure. So something, at least a decent idea to, to do. So here's how far, here's how I got. I'm, I'm actually at 36 inches and I was going to go eventually lower, but... I got some solid rock down in front of my hole now. So, uh, and this is the shovel I was I've been using to loosen the dirt up. So basically, I just shovel down, pick, shovel down, pick. You know, all the way around the hole, make it as good as possible. Here, I'll, you know, you know, I won't easily do that, but um, you know, just shovel around it, loosen it up one last time here, and then post hole digger just works best to scoop that new stuff out. So it works really good for that. Doesn't work to eat best for digging. Um, I've done a lot of these holes for fences, so I guess you learn a lot when you do a lot of them. Not too difficult, but if you want the easy way out, rent a post hole digger. Otherwise, essentially now I'm about ready for getting ready for pouring the concrete, which I'll start with getting the top form ready because I'm not gonna put any form for the first two feet of it, two and a half feet maybe. You want something for at least the top four inches to make a nice, make it look good, uh, but also to get nice, flat, perfectly level surface if you can for the, for the basketball hoop to go on to. So I might clean up the hole a little bit around here, just make it more what I want. Other than that, it's about ready. So now what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna get our sound tube ready. So they come in four foot lengths or longer. Um, this is a four footer, obviously. This is a 12 inch form, because um, I definitely want to go much larger than what the post is gonna be, so I have a good, uh, amount on the surface um, and your minimum size you're going to want to use at least four inches uh, that's just because you want the grass to come up uh, to come over it up to the tube and you don't want to see all that jagged concrete below it I'm going to go six inches for good measure maybe yeah I think six inches is probably enough I'm just going to use my tape measure here and just well, it's usually easier to go on the ground to do this but you can just kind of run around it Ugh. it's a lot easier to do this on the ground but just go around it, all the way around it, and then we'll get ready for cutting it. So, I've got it all ready to cut. I've got my line all the way around it. And now I'm just going to go ahead and use a circular saw. It's a lot easier, a lot faster than using a knife. But you can use a knife if you want to do too. side is what you want because that's going to give you a nice flat surface and something to actually use your trowel on um, to make it as even as possible. You also want to have a level handy because we're going to want to level this all the way around to make sure we're as level as possible. Awesome. All right now we're going to want to stop and double check to make sure that we have the hole ready. In that case we're going to want to have our piece of sound tube ready to know that where it's going to go the where I'm going to actually put it. I'm actually putting it on this corner that I actually have as possible. Um, you're going to want the top of this eventually will be level with your concrete <coughs> excuse me with the concrete itself so um, <coughs> that way the basketball hoop is level with the actual playing surface that's going to be on so that said um, find the most amount exactly where I want to have looks like I'm going to have a little extra concrete on the back side of it but then of course up here I'm just going to fill back up with dirt when I'm all when everything's done that'll be tomorrow um, so that's exactly where I'm going to want it Wanted to stick it up a little bit so it's level with the concrete. And uh, yeah, fairly simple, fairly easy. I'm just going to basically pull it as far forward as possible so it makes it really simple for me. It looks like I'm almost straight down from there so it'll be nice and strong. So, yay! Alright, well, that said, let me get the anchor system ready. 
So within this fine system here, they have, like I said, the rebar and everything. Uh, in, within the instruction book, they kind of show you how to lay out the plate and how this is going to work. Lay down the bag here. The metal plate. And all the nuts and washers and stuff. So we're going to first actually put a, a nut all the way to the bottom of each of these, all four of them. Um, and so that's going to get our, our, our what, the, where the, all the way, I guess, the plate's going to sit against that nut. So we're going to want that as tight as possible in there. Um, not tight, I guess, all the way down to the bottom. Uh, essentially what we want. These, this nut that's all going to be all the way at the bottom will actually be embedded in the concrete. So you'll, these will never come back off. Uh, and, and then the plate, when you pour in the concrete at the end, the plate will actually, when you push this down into it, the plate's actually going to sit on top of the concrete and then that's going to be the steady point for where everything's going to sit from there. Um, you would actually be able to get that plate off, but this nut will actually be embedded in concrete itself. So essentially what you want to do, and they kind of give you a diagram, um, you put these in, and they're going to basically point in the direction to the next hole, uh, all the way around. So they all, they face different directions on all of them. Um, and on each of these, you just basically take a nut, and you might want to actually get a crescent wrench at the end here to tighten it up so it, it can't move. Uh, but we're going to want that facing kind of like that, right? Uh, so we're going to the next one, we're going to do the same thing, we're going to face it to the next hole. So they're kind of facing in a, in a square or in, around, they're facing, facing the next corner, I guess maybe is the best way to put it. And it doesn't matter, you could go the other way too, it wouldn't matter which way you go, but that way we're getting uh, action, pulling up action from all four different directions within the concrete itself. And so we put the next one in, and eventually we'll have all four of these guys on. And then I'll probably take a crescent wrench and tighten up this top bolt, or top nut, so that way it doesn't turn on me when I'm actually setting everything. And these rebar sections will actually go uh, below this. So the, when you pour, when, you, when, we, when I actually go to start pouring, I'll stop and take a video of you putting rebar in too. Um, but the rebar technically this sits at the top, whatever that is, 12, 6 inches. The rebar actually technically goes below it to hold the concrete to give it strength. Uh, but yeah, that's what we need for now at least. All these pieces are going to be for, used for later um, when you actually put the basketball hoop up. But that's what we need to actually have ready so when we're ready for the, putting the concrete and when we're ready to put these in, they just kind of slide down in and kind of wiggle them in so you get the concrete mixes back up in here. So we're going to want a, not a really dry mix, a, at least some moisture to the mix so it actually flows back around these anchors after you push them down into the concrete. And you'll see that in the video too, so at least I hope you will. That's the point. That's the whole, I don't only really get one shot at all of this, but then again, that's how my videos go. I only do one shot. So we'll go from there. All right, a wrinkle in my plan. I actually looked at the instructions this time. 16 inch diameter at the top, 20 inch diameter at the bottom. It says right on there that if I don't follow the instructions per se, you'll probably get more vibration in the hoop. So, guess what I did? I went and made the hole a lot bigger. Uh, not a lot bigger, mainly the bottom. I, I tapered it out so it's wider at the bottom than it is at the top, which is probably a good idea regardless. Um, but so that's what I did. Um, 16 inches almost maybe a little bit larger than that at the top close to 20 at the bottom pretty close I'm still probably going to stick with my 12 inch sound tube However, I'm going to cut this down to four inches rather than six so that it's thicker right at that four inch mark Maybe let it come up a little higher around it, but um, That way I get a really nice small footprint right up top, but the anchors that go down I want it in thicker concrete down below so I'm going to make this smaller, and you don't even have to do four inches, you could definitely do less than that. Uh, it's just whether or not do you want grass growing next to it, because if you put too little of soil, it's going to easily knock out or wash out. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to, I'm still going to stick with 12 inch. They recommend 16 inch. Um, I leave that up to you. Um, but that's what I'm doing. Uh, you could also make your own form out of 2x4s if you don't want to get a summer tube. Uh, you just make a square 2x4 by, by however, you know, 16 inch square. And that would actually work good. 
I was considering doing that, but I don't want to. So I'm gonna stick with this. Plus I'm, only gonna, I'm gonna make this smaller. So I'm gonna recut this to smaller and then get everything ready for the concrete. Nice and sweaty. All right, so I got it all set up. I actually got my first bag of sackcrete in the barrel here. Um, I'm gonna actually put out there real quick that probably a good recommendation for most people to wear gloves during most of this work. Um, I do a lot of construction, so I kind of get used to not wearing gloves, but gloves are definitely a smart idea. Um, secondly, check the instructions on the, the pour mix ratio on your sackcrete or whatever you have. Um, if it's pre-mixed from the concrete company, great, you're good to go. But if you're doing bag and mixer like I am, um, you're going to want to make sure that you look at the mix ratio. In this case, my sacrete recommends for the 80 pound bag, three and a half quarts of water to start with, and then add, add water as necessary. Um, it's never an exact science. So what I did is I actually took a five quart bucket, put three and a half quarts of water on it, put markings on it, so I can just, every time, just go over the hose, fill it up to that point, and get ready to mix. Um, so I'm going to start with that, and then I have the hose handy right there, so I can add more water if I need to. You don't want a soupy mix. Uh, soupy mix is definitely going to make it way too runny. It's going to reduce the effectiveness. You could actually increase surface cracks. You can reduce the strength, the tensile strength of the concrete itself. So you can actually, you don't want to add too much water to make it. You want to add the right amount of water. Um, this is heavy, so you probably want to do the mixing right next to the hole. So you can just pour it right into the hole. Uh, and then use your shovel, obviously, to work it around and make sure it works down in every nook and cranny. Uh, so I'm going to get started. I'm going to take it over to the hole and I'm going to get started. I'll, I'll take a little bit of video of some of the work that I'll do. I'm not going to video at all. I'm not going to bore you. So, uh, yeah, let me get it over there and we'll start. All right, so I usually want to make a dip in the middle so you can kind of get to it all of it as fast as possible. That's good enough. I'm going to my water in. And now you're just going to want to use some kind of apparatus, like a hoe in this case, to mix everything up. You're going to want to mix it up real good now. Probably another thing to keep in mind is maybe wear clothing that you can get muddy or concrete and stuff on, which I don't know if I really want to get tired of this stuff, but I'm going to wash it right away in case so. Just going to work the water into the mix. Gonna keep working until it's, it's nice and smooth to try to get all the dry stuff from the bottom up. So here's what my mix is right now with exactly three and a half quarts of water, which is about where I want it. So it's just about mixing it up like this, making sure you're scraping the bottom best you can. Um, obviously, in a wheelbarrow, it's a lot easier, but I don't have one and I don't want to buy one right now. So I feel pretty confident about that. I'm gonna pour this into the hole. Uh, so let me zoom the camera out a little bit. All right. Huh. You know, it's gonna be as good as it's gonna get. Maybe I have a little bit of dry stuff on the bottom, but I'll go ahead and just tip this into the hole. I'm gonna use my hole. Grab, uh, grab the remaining stuff here. A little bit of dry stuff on the bottom so it's sticking a little bit. Alright, that's the rest of that one. We did have a little bit of dry stuff on the one side there. Change the camera angle because it wasn't the best camera angle. Just make sure it gets mixed up real good in the hole. Make sure it's padded down and situated in there real good. Which I'm gonna want to continue doing this every time I go up. So I'm not gonna videotape this whole process, but you get the idea. Now this one I'm definitely doing differently. I put in half the bag of quick creek, and then put the water in, mix it up decently, then put in the remainder bag of the bag, and I use the hole for a little bit. Now I switch over the shovel. I'm able to get to the bottom a lot better. I'm going to get a much thorough, even mixture on this bag, which what I want. I want to even more mixture as I can get. Which this 
snow looks more like the concrete than it wanted. It was definitely a little wet before. But that's obviously because there was a lot of dry concrete at the bottom. So, let me change it and show you this one. So this one is a lot stickier. It's really going to go together really good, but it's not so wet that it'll just even out into a flat pancake. At the same time, the one I have down there is pretty wet. So this is about exactly what I want, I think. So I'm going to pour this one in the hole, go from there. Shovel. And you don't want to make sure they get mixed properly. Yet. You don't want any, you don't want them to separate between this one, this pour, this pour, this pour. You want them to mix together and make sure they're together. All right. So far, so good. So here we are. We're well, about 18 inches from the top, I guess. Maybe, maybe a little closer than that. But what we're gonna do now is set the rebar. And what you do with the rebar is you're gonna set it. About eight inches apart in the center of the concrete, so like that, approximately with mine, give or take. I mean, it's close enough. Uh, but you're gonna put those all the way down. You're gonna jam them down. And what I would do is wiggle them around a little bit. I mean, this you're gonna to wanna to make sure that they set down in the concrete real good and the concrete forms around it. Maybe. What I'm probably gonna do here is work the concrete. You know, so that you know that it's setting real good. And then what we're gonna do from there is we're gonna pour up to the top to I'm gonna get one more bag at least in there. And then uh, probably start set, getting ready to set the form to the top with the, with the second bag. I probably have two more bags to go and then I'm not complete, which is going to be about eight bags, give or take, maybe nine, we'll see, but yeah, there we go, rebar set, let's get another bag going. So we're pretty close to the top now, um, I want to go up a little higher before I set this, so I'm going to add a little, but this time I'm not going to just pour the whole thing, I'm going to add a shovel full as high, so I get to where I want to be. It's not perfect. That's not a big thing, big worry point. Um, you know, in this case, I have a bunch, a bunch, a bunch. 
way, push down on it, it's gonna push that up. Right now, it's about getting by getting it ready for the, the posts to go down into it. So I'm about as level as I'm gonna get, I think, with uh, the two. That's about right there. It's about right, maybe we'll push down a little bit there. Right about there. Set pretty good. I'm probably gonna double check that again once the plate gets put into, into place. But that's exactly where she's gonna go, right there. She's about flush with the top of the concrete here. Uh, maybe a hair lower if, if I was to say that would, if it is lower, it's not much. Uh, so that's where we're gonna go. We get set up by for putting that down in there. Alright, so here we go. So what you're gonna want to do is you're also gonna want to make sure that this is square with the actual concrete itself. So you might want to take a tape measure, which I'm going to here in a minute, once I get it down in there. I'm just gonna push it down in. Concrete's gonna work its way down a little bit. We'll see here how it comes out. A little crooked. back and take a peek at it make sure it looks like it's supposed to where it's it is where it's supposed to be for death if it doesn't fit perfectly but we're gonna to want to sit it as best we can. That's what we're gonna wait a little bit for this to dry and we're gonna come back and finish this up once it cures a little bit. So we'll uh yeah we'll back and we'll get to clean it up. So here it is. Um, since I've actually poured it and started uh, working on it a little bit I've smoothed out the concrete around the post. It's not quite centered in the se in the middle of the sauna tube, so I'm a little disappointed on my work on that one, but you know what? Uh, given how long it is and how much most of the tension is going to come actually from the back to compression on the front to, uh, I'm not too worried about it at all, actually. Um, and I added some extra concrete on the up front side of the sauna tube itself just to give a little more support on that. Otherwise, uh, I'm not too worried about it because of how deep it is and how well it's all connected. Uh, I will, you can see how the concrete is definitely settled more as it's sat. Uh, so it's definitely below what the actual driveway is. Not much below, but it is above the grade of the grass. So water's not going to be pooling on it. At least it shouldn't. Uh, that said though, uh, there it is. Uh, now it's just about letting it cure. Uh, I made I triple checked the front, make sure it's square with the driveway. Otherwise, it's going to be 
they say not to put the not to do anything with it really not to actually start building the actual uh, uh, basketball hoop itself for for 72 hours so this is gonna sit for a few days and cure so thankfully I did it tonight because it's supposed to get colder and colder as the, as the until the weekend here so uh, I, you don't want this thing to freeze at least for the first 24 hours, so I should be fine in that case at least, but yay! Next is going to be the basketball hoop, and uh, yeah. So that's part one. Um, messy, back-breaking work, I will say that, because those bags are pretty dang heavy. Um, it recommended nine bags. I Like I said, I bought ten. Uh, in all reality, I used eight I could have probably used a hair more, so I could have opened that ninth bag, but at the same time, I'm happy with how it is, so I'm not worried about it. Um, but yeah, that obviously, if you can get a 16 inch sound tube, do that. 12 inch is definitely tight. I would have rather had a 16, but yeah. So, enjoy. I hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, part two will be coming after I can get the after it cures and I have enough time to start building the actual post itself, so stay tuned for part two. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, comment, watch my other videos. Thanks for watching, guys.